gently take the lid off. This is a ladies powder puff and it is in a crystal jar and the lid is engraved with the woman's initials. Her name was Mary Connolly. She was a follower of Brother 12, who's well known in this area for being a cult leader in the 1920s and the 1930s. Museums collect artifacts, pieces of headwear, promotional plates given to customers by grocery stores of long ago, and then create themed exhibits encased in glass for us to catch a glimpse of our past. We rely really heavily on the community to contact us when they think they have something that might be important to the history of Nanaimo. And we've got a pretty lengthy process that we go through to research the history of that artifact, make sure that it tells a strong story of Nanaimo. To keep people coming back time and again, the museum needs to create fresh, temporary exhibits in addition to its permanent displays. It is a challenge, so a couple of times a year we change our feature gallery. We usually do an in-house exhibit, which this extension exhibit is. It's something that we've developed from the ground up. Walking around an exhibit at a museum, you'd never guess it could have taken them up to three years to pull it all together. It starts with the idea, which in this case was continuing looking at different communities within Nanaimo. So areas like Harewood and Extension are on our list of exhibits to create because while they're all part of Nanaimo now, they used to be very separate and distinct communities. There are several stages involved in developing a display, starting with the idea, the layout of the exhibit, what would the photographs look like, how big should they be, what should the text look like, then the staff start searching for artifacts to include in the exhibit. And that meant that we were contacting museums and archives and art galleries all over the Lower Mainland and Nanaimo and other parts of Vancouver Island because we have a very small collection of extension artifacts in-house. So this crib was owned by the Torko family who immigrated from Finland. Uh, Sam Torko was a coal miner and he made this crib in the 1890s for his kids. I think they had about 11 children so it was well used and it was donated to the Royal BC Museum and I found it because they had it on exhibit last summer. The other thing that we try and do is get in touch with neighborhood associations. So a lot of areas in Nanaimo have a neighborhood association. You go to a meeting, you let them know what you're working on, the types of things that you're looking for and hope that you can make some connections that way. Some of the best stories are in people's homes. It's in a shoebox in their closet. It's an artifact that's, you know, stuffed in the attic that everybody knows about but nobody looks at. It's one thing to knock on doors and ask if they can place a family heirloom on display for all to see. The museum needs to protect the item, but also respect the story of the items on loan to them. This is a wedding dress from a 1902 wedding in extension, which is interesting because there were a couple of churches in the community. This was worn by Mary Slogar when she got married, and it was made by her, presumably by her family in Budapest and then shipped here for her wedding. So I think that there's a trust piece between the museum and the community to make sure that we're going to be portraying the history of the community in an accurate way, but also that reflects the way that the community feels about itself. We really want people to feel like it's their story represented in the museum. Our history is what makes our communities unique, and museums connect us to our history. For Shaw TV, I'm Annette Lucas.